Now, whatever advances may have been made by Nimrod would have been well and good, but Nimrod was an ungodly ruler. The name Nimrod comes from Marad and means he rebelled. The expression that he was a mighty one before the Lord can carry a hostile meaning. The word before oftentimes in scriptures is used to mean against. As we turn to Strong's exhaustive concordance, the number 6440, he was a mighty hunter before the Lord, meaning against the Lord. Now being called a Nimrod in modern time is rather scornful. Now everyone knows that Strong's was most certainly a good theologian and a good scholar. Now, encyclopedias aren't to be taken out of the library, so here's a quote from the Jewish Encyclopedia. It says that Nimrod was the one who made all the people rebellious against God. Listen to what Josephus wrote. Now, it was Nimrod who excited them to such an affront and a contempt of God. He was the grandson of Ham, the son of Noah, a bold man and great strength at hand. He persuaded them not to ascribe it to God as if it was through his means they were happy, but he believed that it was to be their own courage which procured that happiness. He also gradually changed that government into tyranny, seeing no other way of turning men from the fear of God. Now Josephus, a noted historian, adds that Nimrod would have avenged himself on God if God had in mind to flood the world again, that Nimrod would build a tower too high to reach his one world government power. Now he would protect himself from any further floods and also get even with God for having destroyed his forefathers in the previous flood in Noah's Ark. Now this is recorded in history books all around the world. Now the multitudes were ready to follow the determination of Nimrod and they built that tower. Now the place wherein they built the tower is now called Babylon. Now what does the Catholic version of the Bible have to say about Nimrod? Well, in a footnote it says that he was a stout hunter, not of beasts, but of men who by violence and tyranny he brought under his dominion. And such he was. Now this is definitely agreed by both Catholic and Protestant writings. Now basing his conclusion on information that has come down to us in history and legend, Alexander Hislop has written in detail of how Babylonian religions developed around a tradition concerning Nimrod, his wife Semiramis, and her child Tammuz. Now when Nimrod died, according to the story, his body was cut up into pieces, burnt, and sent to various areas. Similar practices are mentioned by heathens even in the Bible in Judges 19. Following his death, which was greatly mourned by the people of Babylon, his wife Semiramis claimed that he was now the sun god. Later, when she gave birth to a son, she claimed that her son Tammuz, by name, was their hero Nimrod, reincarnated and reborn. This cut shows the way Tammuz came to be represented in classical art. Now, let's put the cards on the table. Nimrod dies and people looked up to Nimrod. He was like a king. They worshipped him. She conceived a son and claimed that the reincarnation of the father was now in the son Tammuz. What were the people to believe? The people had already been great followers of Nimrod. Well, the mother of Tammuz had probably heard of the prophecy of the coming Messiah to be born of a woman, for this truth was known from the earliest time. The Bible says in Genesis 3.15 that I will put enmity between between you and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, devil, and thou shalt bruise his heel. That's when God was talking to the woman after she had been deceived by the serpent. Now how was the devil's head crushed? Well, the devil's head was crushed when Christ had died at Calvary. For you see, Adam and Eve would have lived forever. Yet they disobeyed God and died. They were under the control of the devil. The devil had power of death. That's why Christ had to come to Calvary's cross and die. He had to take that power away from the devil. In Hebrews it says that Christ partook of the same flesh and blood as man did so that he could take the power of death away from the devil. 
Now, Christ accomplished this by being raised from the dead. The devil couldn't keep him in the grave. Therefore, Christ's power was greater than the devil, and his heel was bruised by having a nail driven right through the bottom of his feet. Now, Tomaz's mother, Nimrod's wife, claimed that her son was supernaturally conceived and that he was the promised seed. In religions that developed, however, not only was the child worshipped, but the mother was worshipped also. Now, history has already proven this. Much of the Babylonian worship was carried on through mysterious symbols. It was a mystery religion. The golden calf, for example, was a symbol of Tammuz, the sun god. Now, since Nimrod was to believe to be the sun god, or Baal, fire was considered as his earthly representation. Thus, as we shall see, candles and ritual fires were lightened in his honor. In other forms, Nimrod was symbolized by the sun, fish, trees, pillars, and animals. Now didn't the Apostle Paul describe perfectly well the course of Babylon when he said in Romans 1, they serve the creature more than the creator. Now this system of idolatry spread from Babylon to the nations, for it was from this location, Babylon, that men were scattered over the face of the earth. Now as they went from Babylon, they took their worship of the mother and child and the various mystery symbols with them. Now, remember that when the Roman Empire became a world empire, it is a known fact that she assimilated into her systems the gods and religions from the various pagan countries over which she ruled. Since Babylon was the source of this paganism and of these countries, we can see how the early religion of pagan Rome was but the Babylonian worship that had developed into the various forms and under different names in the countries which she had gone. Bearing this in mind, we notice that it was during this time when Rome ruled the world that the true Savior, Jesus the Christ, was born, lived amongst men, died and rose again. He ascended into heaven and sent back the Holy Spirit and the New Testament church was established on the earth. True Christianity spread like a prairie fire. It was said of those early Christians that they had turned the world upside down. Now, however, before too many years had passed, men began to set themselves up as lords over God's heritage in the place of the Holy Spirit. Instead of conquering by spiritual means and by truth, as the early days, men began to substitute their ideas and their methods. Attempts to merge paganism into Christianity were being made even in the days when our New Testament was being written. For Paul mentioned that the mystery of iniquity was already work and warned that there would come a falling away. Now here is a secular book by Peringer and inside a picture of the interior of the Pantheon which at one time was dedicated to the hierarchy of the gods, that is pagan gods, and now dedicated to the Virgin Mary and all the saints found in Rome. Again, the idea of merging paganism into Christianity can be seen in this mosaic showing the sun god Apollo driving his chariots across the sky. The Christians later adopted Apollo's attributes and used them to symbolize Christ. Now this is found in a non-Christian book. By the time that Jude wrote the book that bears his name, it was necessary for him to exhort the people to earnestly content for the faith that was once delivered unto the saint. For certain men had crept in who were attempting to substitute the things that were no part of the original faith. Now my friends, take heed of Paul's message. He says, the mystery of iniquity is already at work. The idea of merging paganism into Christianity was even in his day, and he warned of a falling away. Well, hi, I'm sure I'm glad you joined us for this Bible study. One thing's clear, we're trying to answer who is the mystery religion, Babylon the Great of Revelations chapter 17, and we are going to unveil to you today Proof positive answers that we can find Mystery Babylon today in our society around the world. And so we start in Babylon. And why Babylon? Because she's called Babylon the Great. And in Babylon, at the Tower of Babel, there was a religion there. It was called the Religious Order of the Babylonians. And they had a religion there with traditions and ceremonies and structured in such a way that we can see in all the religions of the world a very similar idea is happening, similar practices, similar traditions.
Well, in order for us to understand that, it starts at the Tower of Babel. And when God confounded the language, the people scattered all over the world. And what happened? They took those ideas with them. Why do you think in Egypt you see pyramids? And the same thing is true of the Incas in South America. They too built pyramids. The pyramid is a picture of the Tower of Babel. My friends, one thing's clear. When we see in India Buddhists praying with rose with the beads, and we see in one denomination of Christianity.